If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to estimate the volume of this red blood cell. And most of us know that the density of an object is equal to its mass divided by its volume. The question gives us the density of this red blood cell, and it also gives us the mass. And so we can rearrange this equation and solve for the volume of the red blood cell. And to do that, we would multiply both sides of the equation by the volume V. This way it cancels out on the right-hand side. So then we would have volume times density is equal to mass. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by the density. We can see, therefore, that the volume of this red blood cell can be estimated by its mass divided by its density. We could then plug in the given quantity of the mass, 1.00 times 10 to the minus 12 kilograms, and then divide that by the stated density of blood, which was 1,100 kilograms per meter cubed. We could then pick up our calculators and type this in. And when we do that, we get approximately 9.09 .09 times 10 to the negative 16. And then the unit we can see by referring back to the setup, the kilograms will cancel out. This meters cubed will actually end up in the numerator, so we have the volume in terms of meters cubed. And so this would be the correct answer to the first part of part A. But then part A also asks us to find the surface area of this spherical red blood cell. Now, the surface area of a sphere is equal to 4 times pi times radius squared. That would be a formula we are expected to know, or perhaps we could look it up. But in order to find the surface area, we're going to need the radius of this sphere. And we were not told that. So we're actually going to need a second equation in order to find the radius. Now, we know that the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 thirds times pi times radius cubed. And since we just figured out the volume, we're going to be able to figure out the radius and then use that to calculate the surface area. Why don't we multiply both sides of this equation by 3? That'll leave us with 4 pi r cubed on the right-hand side. We'll then divide by 4 pi, and that'll set it equal to radius cubed. And then what we'll do is take the cube root of both sides. Or alternatively, you can raise both sides to the power of 1 over 3. This power and this power, when we multiply them, will produce a 1. So that would be radius to the first power, or just radius, which would then equal 3 times the volume over 4 pi. All of that is raised to the 1 third power. Let's go ahead and take the volume and plug that in. And then when you punch that into your calculator, you can find that the radius is roughly 6.01 times 10 to the negative 6. And the units of that radius will be meters. So now that we have the radius, we can take that and plug it in to the area formula. And then when you punch that into your calculator, you will find the radius is roughly 4.54 times 10 to the minus 10. The unit here will be meters squared, as we can see in the formula. And so this is the correct answer to the second part of part A. For part B, we are asked to calculate or estimate the capacitance of the cell by assuming that the membrane surface acts as parallel plates. And so we know that when we have a capacitor made up of parallel plates that is filled with a non-conducting material, which is called a dielectric, we can determine its capacitance by the following equation. And so we can see that that capacitance is equal to a dielectric constant, which is symbolized by this letter K, or kappa, actually, which is given to us as being 5.00, times a constant times the area of one of the plates of the capacitor, and then divided by the distance between the plates. Now we've sketched a little simple diagram of a parallel plate capacitor that is filled with a dielectric material. The parallel plates in this picture would be the membrane of this red blood cell. And so the distance that we would need would be the thickness of that membrane, essentially. The question notes that the thickness of the membrane is roughly 100 nanometers. So that's going to be the distance that we plug in here. And then we already figured out the total surface area of this red blood cell in the previous part of this question. So we'll plug that in. The constant is a known value. And then again, the dielectric constant is 5. So let's go ahead and plug in all the known values. 
Notice that for the distance d, we converted the nanometers to a standard unit of meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 9. We have to make sure all of our quantities are in their standard units. So when we process this number, we get roughly 2.01 times 10 to the minus 13. And then the standard unit of capacitance is the farad. And so this would be the correct answer to part b. For part c, we can calculate the total charge on the surface of the membrane by taking the capacitance of the membrane and multiplying it by the potential difference across the membrane. The question notes that there is a potential difference across the membrane of 100 millivolts. We'll have to make sure to convert that to the standard unit volts by multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. And then we already determined the capacitance in the second part of the question, so let's plug in the known values. And then when we multiply those out, we get roughly 2.01 times 10 to the minus 14, and the standard unit of charge would be coulombs. So this represents the charge on the entire surface of the membrane. We could then convert this into the number of electronic charges as follows. We take the total amount of charge, and then we multiply it by a conversion factor. Now, one electronic charge has an amount of charge equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And if we set our conversion factor up in this manner, we would see that the coulombs here in the numerator would cancel with the coulombs in the denominator. So we'll go ahead and multiply this quantity out. And we get a total number of charges equal to 1.26 times 10 to the power of 5. And we can see that the unit here would just be E, which represents electronic charges. And so this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and then subscribe so that you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that's displayed on the screen and I'll do my best to post the solution to it here on YouTube.